internationally, obviously, you know, we, we talk about mm. the real players and the people like us is at home and we are very commentary yeah. about things. So what is the real force saying, I mean, f from your point of view, what's the real force doing? Because sometimes we can't stop the real force, whatever, whatever our view, point of view yeah. is. Yeah. What is the real force doing? So you're talking about those sort of events overseas, which are really pushing things well, along. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and someone, if everyone's going to nuclear, then yeah. you know, no matter what your view is, we're going to nuclear, right? Yeah, that's kind right. And look, you, you're touching on an important point there, Nob, because the Australians do not, we're not well informed in Australia about what's happening in the nuclear industry globally. Because we've got no nuclear industry of ourselves, ourselves, right? So it's sort of completely off our radar, mm. really. And the media do not really cover a lot of significant moves in the uranium and nuclear industry. You know, COP26 last year, one of the most significant announcements in that COP was the Chinese nuclear build-out. You know, the Chinese are building more reactors in the next 15 years than the whole world put together in the last 35. Like, enormous numbers, right? And it was not, it, it got zero airplay here in Australia, but it was by far the most significant announcement at COP26, the climate change conference, right? So it sort of plays very funnily out here. And, you know, and obviously I'm familiar with what's going on internationally in the market. One element I think which is going to surprise people is that there were a number of countries that were looking at shutting down their nuclear. And there were a number of countries that were like, well, we've got nuclear energy, we'll just... We'll, we'll run the plants until they're finished and then we'll shut them when they've reached their end of life, right? So even in the last, I think it's something like the last, I think Cameco said the last 12 months, 22 reactors have either uh, been restarted instead of being shut down or their life has been extended beyond what they were originally going to do, right? Now we've got 438 odd reactors globally. So 22 or 438, that's a big number, which has shifted course in just the last 12 mm -hmm. months, right? So you're talking about what are the global forces at work? Well, there's an example of what's happening, which is a real physical reality in terms of the nuclear market. And we haven't even talked about new build yet, right? Mm. And the bit that is going to really surprise people, I think, is the speed at which the small modular reactor sector is now starting to gather pace. This is that uh, submarine size reactors well, that people talk about? Yeah, that, that's often how people think of them. Um, technically, well, officially, the International Atomic Energy Agency defines it as a reactor that's 300 megawatts or less, or might be 350. So, you know, a typical nuclear reactor might be one gigawatt, right? So it can be 300 or less, so, and it can be from a nuclear submarine through to a, just a scaled down, you know, pressurized water reactor of some sort, um, depending on what type you're talking about. So this is the problem. When you talk small modular reactors, it, it's actually a wide range of different types. It could be scaled down current technology, right? So Rolls-Royce in the UK are doing that. They're basically building a smaller version of what we build everywhere. When you say smaller, are we talking about footprint small? Yes, footprint yeah, small. footprint smaller, but yeah, it's smaller in the sense that it's, it's producing less, less output yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end of the day. So yes, it's scaled down. Okay, okay. And they're trying to do it in such a way so that the components of the scaled down unit can be produced in a factory and taken to site and put together like Lego, okay, right? Okay. Whereas when you build a big one, 1 1.4 gigawatt nuclear plant, you've got a lot of bespoke pieces of equipment. It's difficult to bring them in. You know, construction's complex, right, with those sort of types of units. So Rolls-Royce and other operators, they're trying a different approach to make it quicker. Now, they're, they're shooting for first commissioning of their first plant in the UK in 2029. There's a, uh, another US provider that's looking at 2028 for the first one. So that's, it. that's the end of this decade. Not, you know, here we are about to go into 2023. 2028 doesn't seem that far away to me, right? No, and, and, you know, especially I, at our age. Yeah, that's right. And, and, I, and I think, you know, I'm not suggesting there's going to be hundreds of small modular reactors in 2028, 2029. That's just the start of a, of a, yeah. of a larger movement yeah, where yeah. I think people are going to be moving towards that.